It's good to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ today. Now some of you came today Some of you came today thinking, ah, oh, this is Pentecost Sunday. And you are correct. Maybe you were expecting to hear a sermon on Pentecost. The sermon today will not be on Pentecost. Pentecost, but I will say something short about Pentecost. Do we understand the background of Pentecost? Pentecost was something that started long before the church began. Pentecost is the Greek word. But if we go all the way back in the history of Israel, after God had brought them out of Egypt, as he is taking them into the promised land, God gave them different feasts that they must observe. Different feasts. One of those feasts was was the Feast of Weeks. And that was 50 days after the beginning of harvest. They were to bring the first fruits of their harvest and make an offering to God. So, why is it important to understand that? Because it's not an accident that the church was started on the day of Pentecost. Because the Feast of Weeks from the life of Israel was, was to honor God for giving the harvest. And what happened on the day of Pentecost? There was a great harvest of souls. The book of Acts tells us 3,000 were added to the church that day. They were the first fruits of the church. And because they were the first fruits, and the church was begun, because the Holy Spirit came to live in the hearts of God's people, faithful believers over the years have continued to proclaim Christ. And that's why we are here today. We are not the first fruits, but we are the result of the Holy Spirit being at work. And the Holy Spirit will continue to call people to himself until Christ returns. If you want to read about the Feast of Weeks, you can read in Leviticus chapter 23. Twenty-three. 
Mambo ya Malawi chapitre 23 we we have a description of what this feast of weeks was. Hapo amefasiria nini ilikuwa hiyo fete ya weeks ya Juma. You can do some study on your own. Utaweza kufanya utafuti kwa hapo mwenyewe and I trust that you will. Na naamini kama utatafutisha. Today we want to return to the book of Genesis. Ah, leo tutarudia tena katika kitabu cha mwanzo. Chapter 2. Mwanzo chapter 3. And I would like for us to read beginning in verse 8. Na na tutaanza kusoma kwenye mstari wa 8 through the end of the chapter. Paka mwisho wa hii sura. Amen. Na mti wa uzima katikati ya bustani na mti wa ujuzi na mema wa mabaya Ukatoka mto katika Edeni kuitilia bustani maji na kutokea hapo ukagawanyika kuwa vichwa vinne Jina la wakwanza ni Pishoni ndio unao zunguka nchi yote ya Havila ambako kuna dhahabu na dhahabu ya nchi ile ni njema huko kuna bedola na vito shoham na jina la mtu wa pili ni gihoni ndio unaozunguka nchi yote ya kushi na jina la, la mtu wa tatu ni idekeli ndio unaopita mbele ya ashuru na mtu wa nne ni frati bwana mungu akamtoa huyo mtu akamweka katika bustani ya Edeni ailime na kuitunza Bwana Mungu akamwagiza huyo mtu akisema matunda ya kila mti wa bustani waweza kula walakini matunda ya mti wa ujuzi wa mema na mabaya usile kwa maana siku utakapokula matunda ya mti huyo utakufa hakika Bwana Mungu akasema si vema huyo mtu awe peke yake nitamfanya eh, nitamfanyia msaidizi wa kufanana na naye Bwana Mungu akamfanyia kutoka katika hardi kila mnyama wa bustani na kila ndege wa angani akamleta akamletea hada mbele aone ata waitaje kila kiumbe hai jina alilo kihita Adam likawa ndilo jina lake Adam akawapa majina yao kila mnyama wa kufugwa na ndege wa angani na kila mnyama wa mwitu lakini hakuonekana wa kumsaidia Adam aliyefanana naye Bwana Mungu akamletea Adam usingizi mzito naye akalala kisha akamtoa ubavu wake mmoja akamfunika nyama mahali pake na ule ubavu aliyoutoa katika Adam Mungu akaufanya aka, akaufanya mwanamke akamleta kwa Adam Adam akasema sasa huyu ni mfupa katika mifupa yangu na nyama katika nyama yangu basi ataitwa mwanamke kwa maana ametwaliwa katika mwanamume kwa hiyo mwanamume atamwacha ata baba yake na mama yake naye atabatana na, na mkewe nao watakuwa mwili mmoja nao walikuwa uchi wote wawili Adam na mkewe wala hawakuona haya amen amen Father God we thank you for your word your word is truth we need your holy spirit to guide us to teach us to give us the understanding of what you have told us we ask that the Spirit will teach us now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There are some important things that God is teaching us in these verses. 
kuna ma, vitu, uh, vitu ambavyo Mungu anatufundisha kwa hii mistari tunasoma hapa The things that God is teaching us here ambayo uh, Mungu ametufundisha anatufundisha hapa we find that in our world today tunaitazama tumeiona katika dunia ya leo people are questioning watu wanajiuliza uliza people doubt the truth that we people question did god really do this how do we know what truth is brothers and sisters i can give you a guarantee Naweza kuwa patia kuambia ukweli that what we read in the word of God yote ambayo tunasoma kwa kitabu neno la Mungu it is the truth ni ukweli. So what is God telling us here? Ni nini Mungu anatuambia hapa? The first thing in verse 8 and 9. Kitu cha kwanza kumstari ya 8 na 9. God planted a garden Mungu ameufanya jardin in his time is called Eden. Amefanya bustani kwa nafasi inaitwa Edeni. And he puts Adam and Eve in this garden. Akaweka Adam na Eva ndani ya hiyo bustani. Now I'm hoping that you remember from Genesis chapter 1. Na naamini mnakumbuka ku kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya kwanza that we already have been told about creation tumekuwa tumeshafasiriwa kwa ajili ya uumbaji and now we are getting some more pieces of the story and then tunaendelea kupata kipande kwa kipande ya historia hiyo so in god's perfect creation ndani ya mungu uumbaji wake wa kweli there is a garden kulikuwa hiyo bustani he puts adam and eve in this garden kwa adamu na eva kwa hiyo bustani this garden was perfect. Hiyo bustani ilikuwa sahihi. Now it's interesting we are told of two of the trees. Na ilikuwa kia kia kushangaza wakasema kulikuwa miti miwili huko. There were more than two trees in the garden. Kumekuwa miti mengi sana tofauti ya hiyo mbili. Verse 9 says that God made every tree grow that was pleasant to the sight and good for food. Mungu anasema kwa sura ya 9 kama miti yote ilikuwa na kumala na ilikuwa nzuri kwa kutumia kama chakula. But then God tells us two of the trees had special names. Lakini Mungu anasema kuna miti miwili ambayo ina majina tofauti. The tree of life, ni muti wa uzima, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Na muti wa kujua ukweli na na ubaya. God tells us that he gave Adam and Eve everything that they needed. Mungu anatuambia kama alipatia Adamu na Eva vitu vyote ambavyo walikuwa wakitaka. He gives them the food that they need. Amewapa chakula ambao wamekitaka because he is their provider. Kwa sababu ni yeye ndiye alikuwa akiwashirikia. If we would read in chapter 1, kama tungesoma sura ya kwanza, we are also told to elezewa kama that all of the different uh, herbs of the field were given for food as well. Ile yote majani ambayo ilikuwa kwenye hiyo bustani ilikuwa ikipatiliwa kwao kama chakula. So God has placed Adam and Eve in this perfect place. Mungu akatia Adamu na Eva kwa hiyo bustani nzuri. He has given them all the food that they need. Akawapatia chakula chochote hicho walikuwa wakitaka. Verse 10 tells us Sura ya 10 inatuambia that God also put a river there that would water everything. Mungu akaweka a a rivier mule ambayo ilikuwa na vyote ambavyo wanataka. Then we read that God gave some responsibility to the man and the woman. Na tumasoma kama Mungu akawapatia sasa majukumu kama mume na mwanamke. Verse 15 tells us this response to Surah that Adam and Eve were to cultivate they were to take care of this garden Adam na Eva walikuwa na jukumu ya kuchunga na kuchunguza hiyo bustani 
So God places them in a perfect environment. Mungu amakumawek katika fasi nzuri, and then He gives them some responsibility. Na kwa pati ya majukumu ya kwanza. That sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Ame skilika simple. Adam and Eve, you are going to live here. Adam na Eva mutaenda kuisha. Take care of it. Mukamata mshuruki. But there was one more thing God said. Of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. Amwezi kaitumia. For in the day that you eat of it, kwa sababu siku muta kula kwenye ile muti, you will die. Muta kufa. The instructions are simple. Uh, ilikuwa ni in simple iyo matukumu wa mbamu wa mpata. God had created everything perfect. Mungu ameumba kila kitu sahihi. And he gives instructions to the man, take care of it. So we see even here that it was God's plan for man to work. Sometimes we wish that we had everything that we needed and we didn't have to work. But we see God gave Adam and Eve everything. And he also required that they work. We read more detail about the creation of Eve. God's desire was not that Adam stay alone. So he says, I will make him a helper that is like him. Now all of the different animals that God had created, they were not comparable to Adam. But God gave Adam a responsibility over these animals. Adam had the responsibility to give names to them. So if you have ever wondered, why did the zebra Get the name zebra. Do you need a zebra when I eat a zebra? Why did the lion get the name Simba? It goes back to the garden. In Arudia, muazogo bustania idin. Now, the Hebrew words were not Simba and what I had. Na leno ya na jina zao sa kibrania ay si o Simba ama matuka. But the names of the animals came from Adam. But the magina yamanyama inetukia kwa Adam. But then we read about Eve. Na tena tukasoma kwa jili ya Eve. It is the first surgery, the first operation that we ever have in history. Ni upasuaji wa kwanza ambao ulifanyika. God put Adam to sleep. <laughs> he took a rib from his side. And he created Eve. So God has them in the garden, a perfect place. He gives them responsibility to take care of this garden. But he tells them there's one thing they cannot do. And he promises them this one thing. If you disobey, you are going to die. Think about 
what God has done here. The perfect God has a perfect creation. He has given Adam and Eve everything that they need to live. They don't lack anything. They will never go hungry. They will never be thirsty. They will have everything that they need. God knew exactly what he was doing. He had already prepared the place to provide everything for them. Think about for you and I as followers of Christ today. We don't live in a perfect place, do we? We don't live uh, We live in a world full of trouble. We live in a world where there's hunger. Where there's sickness. Where there is crime. So the world the world we're living in today is different from where Adam and Eve were. In another sermon, we will talk about the reason why our world is like it is. But if you and I are children of God, if we have been born again, we can be confident of this thing. God has provided and will continue to provide. Mungu ametupatia na tendelea na kutushurulikia. Everything that you and I need to live. Kila kitu ambacho wewe na mimi muna taka ili muishi. Turn with me to 2 Peter. Mustoktu fungue kitabu katika Petro wa pili. Chapter 1. Petro wa pili sura ya kwanza. Petro wa pili sura ya kwanza. Verses 2. Second Peter chapter one verses two to four. Petro pili sura Amen. What does Peter tell us that God has done? For those who are in Christ, God's power has given us everything that we need for life. That's everything that we need physically. But also everything that we need spiritually. Now, on the spiritual side, 
Many times we pray and we ask God to give us more faith. Uh, or we ask him to give us more of the Holy Spirit I understand what we mean when we ask God to do that Peter here tells us something we need to understand Peter here God has already given us enough of everything that we need. <laughs> and just as God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning, and his creation was perfect, and he gave Adam and Eve everything that they needed for life. So as he makes you and I a new creation in Christ. That same power that created in the beginning. That power gives you and I everything that we need. So that we can live in Christ. Do we really believe that though? It's easy to say that we do. But what happens when it comes time for the rent to be paid? What happens when we need to go to the hospital? What happens when we need to pay school fees? Do we really believe God and trust Him that He's given us everything that we need for life and godliness? I confess. Uh, I struggle. There are times when the bills have to be paid and I look at the money in the bank. And I begin to worry and get anxious. I am no different than anyone else. And finally, after I worry and get anxious for a while, the Holy Spirit reminds me God is the one in charge. Amen. 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 Jesus in Matthew chapter 6. He spoke to this very thing. Probably these verses are ones that we know. Yeah, when Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, one of the things Jesus said we should pray for is is our daily bread. What we need for the day. That's Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. So yes, we pray and we ask God to give us what we need. And we trust that he will do that. But Jesus goes on to say later in this chapter. Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you'll eat or drink, about the clothes that you will wear. He brings it to this one point. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matayo sita mustero akumina tatsu na tatsu. But seek first the kingdom of God. Itafute kwanza ufalma mungu and his righteousness. Na u na haki zaki zote and all these things will be added to you. Na hi yote itaongezo atu yaku. Amen. We have the promise. Tunakuwa na uakikishu. God, Ahadi. God gave everything to Adam and Eve. Mungu amewapa kila kitu Adamu na Eva. He knew their needs better than they did. Alijua itaji zao vizuri kuwapzidia wewe wenyewe. Is it the same with us? Sio sawa na sisi kwa leo. Does God know our needs? Yes. Kweli Mungu anajua itaji zetu. I will guarantee now, Hakikishia, God knows our needs long before we do. Mungu anajua hitaji zetu mbele hata tusijue sisi. None of us knows if we will be alive tomorrow or not. Hakuna mwenye anayua kama kishu kutakuwa tukuru hai. But God knows that. Hakini mungu anajua hiyo. And he knows exactly what we will need. Na anajua nini ambayo tutahitaji hapo kishu. Did God know what our brother needed when he was in that accident? That did not take God by surprise. Are we trusting God? What God was doing with Adam and Eve Kitu ambacho mungu wakua kiali kifanya na Adamu na Eva. When he said, I'm putting you here and you take care of this garden. Wakati alizema na waweka hapa kwenye bustani na muishurikie. I'm giving you everything that you need to eat. Na wapatia kila kitu ambacho muna itaji kwa kula. But there's one tree, don't touch it. Alakini kuna muti moja musi ukose. God was giving them a test. Mungu alikuwa akiwa jaribu. Will you trust me to provide everything that you need? Will you trust me that I know best as God? And we will find, we will find, they did not trust God. What about us? How many times do we say, but God, I know better than you? Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Sura ya tatu mbaka sita Mustari wa tatu mbaka sita Mezali tatu Tano sita Nasoma mzali tatu Na mustari wake Wakumina sita Tano wakati sita Tano wakati Tatu tano wakati sita Tatu tatu tano wakati sita what is the instruction we are given in these verses? Do these verses tell us we should trust God? Or should we trust ourselves? We must trust the Lord. Are we only supposed to trust God in some things? Or are we supposed to trust in all things? 
It's easy to trust in God when we're together here on Sunday morning, isn't it? It's easy to sing and dance and be excited. But then, Monday morning is a difference. We need to understand this, brothers and sisters. We can trust God. We must trust God. He is the one who has created us. And as David would say in the Psalms, that he has already written all of our days. God has given you and I as his children everything that we need for life and godliness. Are we trusting him? Or are we trusting in ourselves? Are we busy second guessing God making plans to care for ourselves? Do we say with our lips, yes, God, I love you and I trust you? But behind the scenes, we're working our own plan. Like we will see in another message. Satan is looking for every opportunity. Because he wants us to trust ourselves and not trust in God. It's amazing that God gave Adam and Eve everything that was perfect. And he still had to give them a warning about it. But the same is true in our lives as well. God has told us to trust him. But it is a struggle for us. Time after time we say, yes God, I trust you. Until life becomes difficult. Until a temptation comes along for something else. Brothers and sisters, we can trust God. We must trust God. We don't live in a perfect world any longer. But we, we still serve a perfect God. But alakini mungu mwema. We serve a God that has given us instruction on how to live. And he has given us the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to obey him. Will we do that? Or will we trust in ourselves? Maybe you are an individual here today. That you haven't trusted in God in the first place. You're still living for yourself. Oh, maybe you know Bible stories. Maybe you know all of the right words to use in church. But you're still going your own way. 
Let me give you this warning. Proverbs chapter 14 in verse 12. This is what God tells us. There is a way that seems right to a man. But its end is the way of death. Are you walking your own way that you think is right? Are you walking your own way that you think is right? If you're walking your own way, not in the way that God has set, you will end up in death. Are you trusting God or are you trusting yourself? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are good, you are perfect, you are our provider. You give us everything that we need. You give us the food that we need to eat, the clothes that we need to wear, the, the house that we need to live in. You provide everything because you are a good God. You are a good Father. Father, you also give us everything that we need to walk in godliness. So, Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ, along with myself this morning, that we will trust in you. We will understand that you've given us everything that we need. Now, we need to trust you. We need to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Father, I pray for anybody that's here today that is still walking their own path that they are not trusting in you. They have not surrendered their lives to Jesus. That today, they would understand that they are walking in death. And the path they are on, it leads to destruction. It leads to an eternal separation from you. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would call them to yourself today, just like he did 2,000 years ago on the day of Pentecost. When the gospel was preached, and the people heard, many were saved. God, would you be gracious and merciful today? And would you call people to yourself? Save them from their sin and make them your children. I pray in Jesus' name.